Let's talk to. Um, uh, are you Kieran or Kieran? Kieran. Kieran. Hi, Kieran. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, you want to know how do you start the adoption process? Yes, that's correct. For a minute. Give oh. me a second. Say hello, Philip and Holly. Hello. Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> Hi. Who's that? Say hello. Okay. Sorry, that's my nephew. Oh, <laughs> no problem oh, at all. Gorgeous. Oh, lovely, you're obviously lovely surrounded talk to you, by children then, <laughs> but you'd like to have your own children. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'm like I just turned forty like two days ago. Um, unfortunately, you know, like I've had an eating disorder, and obviously, like the mental cycle has stopped and stuff. Wow. I'm married, got a flat, and I just don't know what to do. To be honest with you, I don't know where to go. I don't know where to start. But you'd I like to have a child. You'd like to have a child, so this would be oh a, God, an option. Yeah. To, right. Okay. So you want to know how to begin and start, and what do you do? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Again, you know, do some basic research. There's uh, nearly 200 adoption agencies in England. You'll obviously want to be using a local one, but you don't have to just go to your own local authority adoption agency. So that's the first thing. Find an agency that you feel comfortable with. So in the same way that you would be trying to in sort of engage with any sort of process, shop around a bit, find somebody who you feel uh, you can trust to talk about the issues here. Because, because of the health issues that you've, uh, you've told us about, um, you, you, do, you will be informed that there is a medical process that all prospective adopters have to go through. Um, so um, your GP will need to be providing reports on that. The important thing is that you love children, you want to have your own children. Uh, people come into adoption for all sorts of different reasons. And, um, but but those, those health issues will, will be discussed with you. I think you. one of the things that, you know, the adoption people do assess quite strongly those, um, you know, as you say, about your eating habits and how your children um, will sort of, you know, conform to that. Because it's important, like my children, I make sure now they know all their vegetables and what to eat, they'll go to the fridge and make sure that they look at something really healthy. And I think it's quite important to address that eating disorder if there is a problem there and make mm. sure that, you know, if you are going to adopt a child of um, whatever age, that you will be able to make sure that the eating habits are right. Did you find the... Because obviously everybody wants to know uh, your health, uh, of both of you. Did you find that intrusive? Um, no, not really, because I think really it's important to make sure that you are healthy. I had to go through, although I was, you know, for seven years ago when I started this, and it has been a long process um, for the fostering and then adopting, I still had to go through a rigorous medical and um, still had to go through all the checks and then, they, they, you know, the social workers and people like that would come in and sort of um, doing the security checks, make sure that you're filling in everything that was right, get things from your medical. And I was really glad of that because it sort of reassured them that I wasn't just an athlete uh, that they thought that was running jumping hurdle into love and, and that I was just saying that I was fit mm. and I wasn't fit so I think it's good that one has to go through that and to prove that you are fit and healthy and it's because, worth it because at the it, end. it does take a lot of time to well, 